Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, uh, Mariah's upstairs doing, I don't know what she's doing, but uh, you guys may hear her walking around because she stomps, she stomps when she walks. She's just like, boom, 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 boom. It's like, you guys remember, remember the scene from Jurassic Park when like the T-Rex was coming and like the water was shaking? Like sometimes that's what it's like. like. She just stomps around. Like sometimes like pictures will be crooked. I'm just like, good Lord, woman. Why do you stomp around this house? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was, you know, I wouldn't really say I was watching. I was reading online and there are these rumors circulating around about the high evolutionary in, in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, right? And and this is this is intriguing to me. Now, I know that Kevin Feige did a Ask Me Anything on Reddit, right? And, and you know, I don't know what all was said because I haven't read the whole thing. Really haven't read any of it, actually. Uh, but off the top of my head, when I think about the high evolutionary in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, my first thought goes to his involvement with Adam Warlock. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it'd be a little too much, right? Like to throw the high evolutionary in there, um, having Adam Warlock show up and be the main villain of the film, because that's really what he was, right? So a little bit of history here. For those of you guys who are, are unfamiliar with the whole high evolutionary Adam Warlock, you know, that that, that whole situation. Um, so when Adam Warlock first showed up in the MCU, I'm sorry, in, uh, in Marvel Comics, he was just known as him, right? And in the Fantastic Four comics, there was this group called the Enclave, and they wanted to use like, you know, science and technology as a means to like conquer the world, essentially. And Adam Warlock was their first creation in terms of creating like a perfect human. The issue that you ran into here, or that they ran into, was that with Adam Warlock being kind of gestated in a cocoon, when he emerged, it was too bright and too much for them to be able to see. And so what they did is they kidnapped Alicia Masters, who was the blind girlfriend of Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four, from uh, The Thing, basically, and then brought her to the Enclave headquarters and then had her like sculpt the face of Adam Warlock based on you know what it was that she felt so they could actually see what he was supposed to look like. Uh, that led, of course, to the Fantastic Four showing up and the Fantastic Four fought Adam Warlock and then he took off into space. Now, that leads into like his involvement with Thor, right, which kind of ties on the Guardians of the Galaxy. And when that happened, it was the idea that Adam Warlock had tried to take Sif to be his wife, and that led to a fight between himself and Thor, and then of course he took off after that. Uh, but from there, that's when it starts to get into the, the whole high evolutionary thing. And so, so when you when you look at Adam Warlock and you look at like the writers of his character, his, his stories over the years, he's really had like two huge writers who have done more to like change his character and really sort of elevate him and and evolve him than almost any other writer. The first that, or not really the first, but the but one that most people know about is Jim Starlin, right? The guy who wrote Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet, all that kind of stuff. And Jim Starlin really took um, really took Adam Warlock and turned him into more of a cosmic character, uh, where he was dealing with like cosmic events and different things like that. But Starlin was also the one responsible for creating a kind of rapport between Thanos and Adam Warlock. And that's why whenever you guys look his character up, you see this sort of camaraderie, or at least this, this sort of respect that goes on between himself and Thanos, even if they're not the best of friends, that was all predicated on the work that Jim Starlin did. But I would say more important than him was a guy named Roy Thomas. So Roy Thomas was this writer who had his hands on everything in Marvel back in the day. Probably the single most important writer in Marvel Comics uh, outside of Stan Lee. Like he had a huge hand, like, like almost all the modern depictions of characters that you see in Marvel Comics is all based on the work that Roy Thomas did. Like Stanley and Jack Kirby created those characters, but Roy Thomas kind of evolved them into the characters that they are now. Uh, but the overall gist here is that, you know, between the time that you had Jim Starlin taking over Adam Warlock and when Adam Warlock fought Thor, you had the events of the High Evolutionary. And the High Evolutionary is a guy named Herbert Wyndham, right? And this is a guy who's basically obsessed with mutate, um, not really with mutation, but with evolution. So he's very akin to like Mr. Sinister. The difference is that Mr. Sinister is obsessed with the genealogy of of Jean Grey and Cyclops, right? You know, like if they ever had a had a child, it would be like this insane, insanely powerful child. That was really kind of where his obsession kind of culminated. I mean, he was obsessed with like the mutant gene, but outside of that, it was really more like Jean Grey and Cyclops. With the High Evolutionary, it was like evolving humanity, right? And so Herbert Wyndham was like this genius scientist who was in Britain and all that kind of stuff. I think he went to Oxford or something like that. Anyway, he was more or less ousted for his his radical ideas on evolution and ended up like evolving himself. He's crazy powerful in terms of the powers that he possesses. He can like grow to huge sizes and really like like all kinds of different things. He can give himself powers by like hyper evolving himself. Uh, but he's best known for taking like like animals, you know, like like you know, cows and things like that. Uh, and actually like 
you know, evolving them. For example, um, when when Magneto, during the story of Magneto uh, in his origin, when he and his wife had escaped from uh, the concentration camps during World War II and then eventually settled down, when everything went south with them and, and like people realized Magneto had powers and they burned his house down, which killed his daughter, and his wife took off, she was pregnant with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, uh, she came across the, the Wondegor Mountains, which is where the High Evolutionary resides. And then she basically ran into his, uh, his sentient bovine. I can't I can't remember what her name was. It wasn't Magda, because um, that was the name of, of Magneto's wife. I can't remember what her name was, but basically, like she handed the children over to to this bovine, who handed them over to the High Evolutionary, and then you know, Magneto's wife took off into the woods, and then basically died, you know, from from exposure to the elements. But uh, but he's he's really big on that, like evolving things, like hyper evolving things. It's kind of like his big claim to fame. But during the stories of Roy Thomas, what had happened was the High Evolutionary had basically like planted life on this place called Counter Earth. Now it always gets a little murky to me. I know that Franklin Richards created a Counter Earth. Uh, maybe he recreated. I think I, I think High Evolutionary was the first one to create it, which is basically an Earth that orbited opposite of the Moon. So you basically had like two Earths orbiting a Moon. Now. It was comic books. I mean, that would screw up the tides on both planets. So, like, it would, it would probably lead to the destruction of both worlds, to be honest. But whatever. Comic book logic. Just go with it. <laughs> but I think I think Franklin Richards ended up recreating it later on. But regardless of the circumstance, uh, there was basically this, like, alternate Earth. And what this did is it housed, like, all these different forms of life that the High Evolutionary had created, including one named Man Beast. And Man Beast was sort of a Roy Thomas stand-in for, like, Satan, more or less. And so what ended up happening is Adam Warlock was eventually like discovered, woken up, that kind of stuff by uh, by the High Evolutionary who said like, you have to go to Counter Earth and fight Man Beast. And in order to prepare him and give him what he needed, the tools he needed to win, he gave him the Soul Stone. Now we don't know where, where the High Evolutionary got the Soul Stone before he gave it to Adam Warlock. We just know he had it. And so he gave it to Adam. Adam went over to Counter Earth, ended up fighting Man Beast, um, lost the first time, and then he was crucified. And then he won the second time. And then basically Man Beast was, was essentially defeated. Uh, but, you know, you, you take that concept and you throw it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you run into a couple of hairy areas right there, right? You know I mean, one, like the Infinity Stones already exist. We, we already know that from the events of Infinity War and, and Avengers Endgame and even all the movies that took place before that. And none of them are in the possession of, of High Evolutionary, at least not that we're aware of. Now, it's entirely possible that like they disperse and they're, they're you know, like they, they really are indestructible. They're fundamental forces of the universe. And so, so long as the universe exists, the Infinity Stones will always like come back in some form or fashion, they'll like be recreated even if they're destroyed. Uh, but regardless of the circumstance, there's no reason to believe the High Evolutionary would have the Soul Stone. If the High Evolutionary does not have the Soul Stone, then that kind of throws out the whole basis behind which he would be involved with Adam Warlock. And again, it just seems like it'd be too much to fold in because what you're talking about is a movie where the Guardians of the Galaxy encounter Adam Warlock for the first time, Adam Warlock and them presumably face off against each other since Adam Warlock would basically be like, would be brand new. It would be like if you took a, you know, just kind of cloned a human and then woke them up all they're confused and and scared about the world around them and then they just kind of react accordingly um and then in turn somewhere in the mix you throw in the high evolutionary i don't really know how that works the only way you could really throw the high evolutionary in to the marvel cinematic universe is if you use them as a way to throw in mutants right now i know i'm always talking about like the x-men honestly i just want to see the x-men in the mcu i don't care how they do it <laughs> <laughs> but what you could basically say is you could say that like the high evolutionary was the one who basically like evolved the genes of like Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and they're they're basically like mutants. It's just they never knew, right? They, they always thought they were just like humans who somehow got powers presumably from the Tesseract. But what you can say is that like the high evolutionary like, you know, modified their genes or something like that so that when they were exposed to some extreme level of power, some exotic level of power, it activated those genes and basically they're the first step in the experiment, right? And so like once the high evolutionary knows it works, he synthesizes whatever it is and spreads it across the world and that's where mutants come from there's there's a lot of different ways that they could do that but but to take a character like him and throw him in to the the mcu is kind of quirky because like the high evolutionary has fought galactus and like held his own so he's by no means a weak character right like the evolutionary war like he's he's by no means a, a weak character like he's pretty intense and he's pretty tough i mean like he would i mean if i'm being honest 
even Thanos, like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, the version of him that didn't have the Infinity Gauntlet, like High Evolutionary probably could have beat the hell out of him. Like he probably could have just like, could have crushed him quite readily. Uh, and if he couldn't, he would just like hyper evolve himself and then give him whatever powers he needed, enhance strength or speed or whatever in order to defeat Thanos. But like he could topple him. You know, I mean, you, you take High Evolutionary from the comics, you pit him against Thanos from the MCU and like High Evolutionary would win. Now, a lot of that's because the, the characters that we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are usually weaker than the versions that we see in the comics for good reason, because you're talking about a more tangible, realistic version of those characters. But the fact remains that, that throwing the High Evolutionary into the MCU, it is a cool idea, but I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would just be too much. It would be too soon, and, and it would just be kind of throwing a ton of stuff in there, right? It would be like if you had Captain America, um, the first Avenger, and like, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't even say Captain America, the first Avenger, um, Captain America 2, the Winter Soldier, and you had like Bucky Barnes, and like with that whole conflict with Bucky Barnes, like the Red Skull comes back. Like it would be like, okay, I mean, it'd be cool, but like there's a lot of stuff going on in that movie and it would just be too much. And so again, like it would be, you know, it, it would work, but just kind of trying too hard. So my thought is, if they're gonna throw in the High Evolutionary, I would save him for a different movie. Honestly, I would make him the main villain of like an Avengers story because he easily could be. You make him like the main villain facing off against the Avengers, oh, it would work so easily because he's just so powerful and so capable. But I don't know, let me know what you guys think down in the in the comments section. I'm really curious what your all's thought is. Again, as far as I'm aware, it's just a rumor that's kind of circulating out there, but I thought we could address it, you know, and have this discussion about it. Uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and High Evolutionary, the MCU explained or something like that. But uh, with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.